So welcome to lesson four, the past study of integral equations. So in this lesson, we'll talk about solution of an integral equation. So when do we see a function is a solution to an integral equation? So let's take a definition. So a function, say y of x, is said to be a solution to an integral equation if when substituted in place of the unknown function, it registers an identity. Okay. And an identity means that the <coughs> equation at the left hand side is always equal to the equation at the right hand side. So when this equation is when this condition is satisfied then we see that there is an identity. So if there is a certain y of x which does this, then that function y of x happens to be the solution to the integral equation. So let's take two examples to um, help us understand the concept very well. So um, the first example says, show whether the following are solution. Okay, that's a preamble. Show whether the following are solutions to the integral equations. And the first one is y of x equals there is a solution to this integral equation. And the second one says, show that y of x equals ex, the solution to the Volterra integral equation to this. Okay. All right. They are not difficult. Let's solve them. The understanding will come. So with the first one, we have this integral equation. And we are saying that y of x equals 3 is a solution to it. Okay. All right. So what it means is that if we change variables and we put y of t equals 3 into the integral equation, we should get s cube here so that we will register an identity. If we register an identity, it means that y of s equals 3 is indeed a solution to this integral equation. If we don't register an identity, then it's the opposite. So since y of x equals 3, then changing variables y of 2 equals to 3. If let's say we're having y of x equals 3x, then changing variables y of 2 would have been 3t. That is, we don't have any x attached to it, and so we have the same thing. So we then come here and we put it into our left hand side integral equation. So we have 0x s minus t squared but now y of t is what 3 dt equals s cube the right hand side so we can bring 3 out because 3 is a constant then you have integral from 0 to x x minus t squared dt equals s cubed then when we expand okay when we expand we get s squared minus 2 x t plus t squared dt equals the right hand side and then when we integrate with respect to t, we will have s squared being a constant. So it will be s squared times t. Then minus 2x t squared over 2. Then plus t cubed over 3. So putting in our limits of integration, we are going to get, wherever we find t, we put x there. So we get x times x t, we put x there. Then minus 2x times s squared over t, then plus s cubed over 3. So this will give us s cubed minus s cubed. So this goes away. And we have s cubed over 3. So here, this cancels this. Then we have s cubed is called what? s cubed. So that means since we have registered an identity, it means that y of x equals 3 is indeed a solution to the integral equation that we had so let's have the second example so in the second example we have this Volterra's integral equation of the second kind we are saying that y of s equals ex is a solution to it so changing variables we are going to have y of t will be equal to et do we get it so that we can put it here so now we have y of x, which is ex, is equal to 1 plus integral from 0 to x, y of t, which is what, et, dt. 
So if indeed this is a solution to this integral equation, if we should solve this, we should get ex also at the right hand side. So let's do that and see if we will get that. So we have ex to be equal to 1 plus. So when we integrate et, we get et, the limit of integration 0 to x. So now when we put in our limit of integration, we'll get 1 plus ex minus e0, right? Then we'll get ex to be equal to 1 plus ex, then e0 is what? 1. So 1 minus 1 goes away, and we have ex equals ex. So you can see we have what? An identity. So it means that indeed y of x equals ex is a solution to the integral equation we had above there. So this is how we show whether a function given is a solution to an integral equation or not. It is very simple, okay? So thank you very much and see you in the next video. So in the next video, we talk about the generate kernels. Thank you very much and all the best. I'm William Kenrindov, finally student of mathematics, KNUSD.